Hey everybody, it's Bruce and the dog on the floor from Grok Shield Learning. Today we get to kick off our series on Phoenix Live View. It's a way of building these highly interactive applications, the one that your customers love, without writing custom JavaScript. Sometimes the best way to learn a new framework is to go ahead and start coding and, and starting to absorb, and that's definitely the case of the Live View. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Live View application. So mix Phoenix new. And live is the option that's going to create all the configuration for the live view. And I want to build something that's super simple, something that everyone will understand. Just a basic counter. And the reason that I'm doing this is that sometimes about building something that's well understood on the back end, you can focus on the front end or the framework that you're trying to absorb. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm building a new application called Turbo Counter. And it asked me if I want to fetch dependencies, and I do. So I know that I'm not going to write a lot of custom JavaScript. Maybe I won't write any JavaScript at all, and that's certainly going to be the case in this application. But Phoenix needs to, because JavaScript is the way that Phoenix is going to take changes that happen on the server and move them to the client and stitch them into the DOM. And the DOM is the object model that's on the in individual web pages. So what's happening now is Phoenix is grabbing all the dependencies that it needs. This is called Node Package Manager. And it's going to use those dependencies to actually work with the JavaScript and the cascading style sheets and other front end assets like that. So now, Phoenix tells us exactly what to do. So it asks us to, to go here. And then right now, I'm going to do one more thing before we get started. So I want to make sure that my live view, yeah. So this is version 13. And that's the one that I want because it matches my version of Phoenix. So I can say mix depths get yeah and you can see that it upgraded my Phoenix live view which is exactly which is exactly what I want to happen so then I can do a mix ecto create if I haven't already done so with a with a dry run yeah so it's it's compiling everything and it's creating my database up oh, you can see that it's already been created which is great and so now I can say mix phoenix.server. And one of the things we'll notice is that it's listening on port 4000. You see that right here. So I can grab this localhost 4000 and I can point my browser right at that localhost 4000. Okay, and this is running. It looks like it's running fine. Everything's fully loaded. So this is just Phoenix. And what we really want to do is code up a live view. So it's a great time to stop and take stock. OK, so this is the default implementation here. This right here points to this page. So this is now a live view, which means it's an interactive view. And we're going to need something with most of those arguments. So in this case, if we want to count, maybe we use a live view called count live, right? We don't need the last thing, which is called an action. So in our case, all we need to do is, is load our counter live. It's going to be pretty simple. So this is basically the shape of what we're doing. We're going to define the, the file on the top. Then we're going to do a mount. And basically, this is an Elixir module. It's part of the web components. Use Turbo Counter Web. We'll talk about that one in a second. Basically enables us to use a live view, and we'll talk about how. And the mount actually puts data into our initial socket, which is the data for a live view. OK, so let's take this. We're going to create a new file, count live.ex. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to drop in this right here. This is count live. We're going to use this. I'm not going to use the impl equal true um, just to keep things a little bit cleaner. 
Um, and now we code up our mount. So basically what's going to happen is this socket is the data for the live view. You have the inbound parameters like which live view that we're working on, what's the action that you're on, things like that, uh, information about the connection. And this has information about the, the session, like what's in your cookies and things like that. And these last two things are user data. So I'm just going to populate this with hello and world. And then we're also going to have this function called render. And it's going to take part of the socket. It's going to take the part that we're putting user data in. So that's going to take a science. So a science plural is the key inside the socket. This is just a map or a struct or something like that. And it has a map called a science where I put all my user variables, right? And in fact, I have one there right now called hello. And so I'm gonna say, hello, or I'm gonna say h1, welcome to turbo counter. And then I'm gonna say hello. Okay. And then I'm going to add another line that looks like sort of like that. That's an H2. And I'm going to say, if you dream it, we can count it. So this is HTML. And one of the convenient ways to drop this in will be to use a here doc. But if you'll notice, we have some work for Phoenix to do here. We need basically a custom type of, of here doc. And so what we're gonna do is use what's called a live view sigil. So if, if we trace through what's gonna happen, we're gonna to go to count, right? Then that's going to look for the live view, count live, which is in here. So count live and based on some information that's in here that gives me some helpers for one, this live view sigil, I can write this code. And all this code does is puts data into a live view. And this is a callback that establishes the initial set of data. And this is another callback that happens whenever your data changes, render is automatically called. And any, so the initial render is interesting because this page exactly gets sent down to the client and it's going to be SEOable and everything else. So the initial render is just straight HTML or whatever string that you provide. So in fact, let's take a look at our live view. So now I can go to count. You can say, you see exactly what we typed. Welcome to Turbo Counter. And we used our variable, I say variable, it's really just one of the keys of a science. And then I said, if you dream it, we can count it. So, so you don't have to use the render function with the live view sigil to render things. We could also render templates here just fine. But sometimes it pays to be explicit and talk about exactly what, what Phoenix is doing before you start to refactor this out and into templates. So what we have here is a live view. And what we can actually do is actually start to send some messages. So I could say, so I can essentially say, um, simer.send. Let's see if I've got this right. I'm going to go to IEX. So I'm going to basically send a timer at an interval. And the um, I want to see what that signature is. So you can see that I'm going to send at an interval. In this case, I send after this time um, to this PID, I send this message. So this is going to look like this. So I'm going to send at one second intervals. I'm going to... Um, 
send to this PID and I'm going to send this message. And what you're going to see when I press save, this is basically going to break because Elixir is going to be sending me messages that I don't handle. So let's see what happens here. So timer.send, oh yeah, I really wanted send interval, right? I have to fix the break before I can get to the break, right? Okay, and you could see the spinning wheel of death that's happening on one second intervals. And we could actually see what's happening in my client. So at one second intervals, I'm actually getting a crash, right? So it says, handle info slash two is undefined or private. And if we look at what this looks like, we're getting the tick message, and then we get a socket. So we can use that to actually implement our own tick message, right? So def uh, handle info, right? And this takes a tick and a socket. And so I'm actually going to send and the socket back. We're not going to change the socket yet, but let's see what's happening now. Okay, so we're getting a message. And what we can actually do is start to track also a counter. I'm going to set that count to zero. And I'm basically going to right now have a reducer over socket. And I'm going to return an assign because a sign basically returns me a socket with new data in it. And I want to assign the account to socket.assigns. Remember, assigns is just a key on the counter with account plus one. And then we could, we could show the count to our users here. And then this is just a variable. Or maybe this is a just a p tag or something like that. Right. So let's see what's happening now. Okay. So we're getting our initial count. We're not updating our socket yet. Right. We, what we really want to do is count based on the socket. Okay. And now this should update the socket for each trip through. Okay. So now you're seeing the two dimensions of a live view. Right. What's happening is we come in through the router right here, we go to count live and count live. We do a mount to set up the initial data for the live view. I add the keys hello and count and the values world and zero. And then every time I change the data, I do a render. So I pick up the assigns and say, well, welcome to counter. And then I drop the variables out of here for the render. And then, so that's one dimension. You can render the assigns. The other dimension is that you can change the assigns based on messages that come in, whether they're clicks on a web page, or whether somebody fills out a form or whether you're getting just process messages or gen server messages from Elixir. So this all makes live view very, very powerful. So this is what we're going to do throughout these next dozen or so videos that make up this course. We're going to learn more inventive ways to render. We're going to learn more inventive ways to send this message and more inventive ways to layer our code so that I can put my business logic, I can basically move it out of the way so that I'm not trying to deal with too much complexity at a time. So those are the three things. Ways to render, ways to change the state that we're rendering, and ways to layer my code. So this is going to be an exciting video series. I hope you are as excited as I am. From Bruce and the dog on the floor for Groxio Learning.